Hey guys, Joe with Carmel Cardio, and today I want to bring you on a journey. I'm working on this Porsche Cayenne. We're going to be doing a radio swap. We're going to be doing front components and rear speakers and possibly a backup camera. So stick around, check it out, and go with us as we do the install on this and see what I do for a living. All right guys, so we're inside the Porsche and we're going to be changing out from this thing that just honestly has fallen off the dash. We're going to swap it out and the customer has brought us a all-in-one system that is to replace the dash bezel to give them Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, give them a bigger screen and make it feel more modern in this Porsche. So I'm going to go ahead and start disassembling, put you on a little bit of a time lapse show that taken apart. And once they get the guts out and about, we'll talk about what's behind there, see how bad it is and show you what's wrong and how to fix it. As you can see from the time lapse, I've got everything out of here. Their main focus is I got the antenna adapter here. I've got a backup camera that's already been installed in here. I want to try and make it work and make sure it's still good and salvageable. And then I've got the factory harness. Thank God they didn't cut it and leave me with like nothing to work with. This is the old harness that came out of this thing. Honestly surprised it worked. I don't know if you can see that. That is not the connection that you should be making on this thing. Also the tape that you've got is just, honestly would have been better if somebody took bubble gum, just squished it on there. Like that, that would have done better than this style. I don't know who, where this came from, where it, who did it, don't care, doesn't matter. But what does matter is that they have this piece on here. It's a pack piece for the steering wheel controls. We're gonna try and make this work and clean it up a little bit, make it look pretty. And once I get done with this, show you the final product of the wiring harness and how it should look and definitely not like this. This is, um, oh Jesus, whoops. This shouldn't be in the car at all looking like that. Let's make it right. Oh, also, I don't know who you are, what you did. Putting this back up here and it doesn't clip right. Don't do a screw. There's an airbag right there, and also you punctured some wires when you go through this harness. Practice your standards, get the clip, replace the clip, put it back in, it's like new. And that way we don't have a screw going through an airbag or main potential harnesses that are vital to the car. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and go back to time lapse. I'm going to put this dash in, make it look pretty, and show you what it looks like. Got this cover off and they got little AC vents up here and everything. So what I'm gonna do though, is since they have AC vents here, but they don't have it back here in this area, this is where the center channel would go, but they don't have a center channel. So what I'm gonna do is you can tell it's already broken a little bit, but that's okay. I wanna take the microphone. I wanna take the microphone. The cable just isn't long enough to go to the A pillar like a standard microphone would be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this right here like so kind of give it a little bit of an angle, glue that in there with some CA glue to bond it and make sure it's all one piece and then 
Make sure it's nice and flush with it. Once that's in there, we're gonna be able to drop the mic wire, run it down and run it back behind the radio. So when this goes back in, the mic's angled upwards, and then whenever they receive a call, they can talk, and the projection of the voice will be directly at the microphone. That's about all the wire I got, so it's not a whole lot. And this is honestly the best solution without having a microphone sitting up on top, looking goofy. Remember, it's a Porsche, and I wanna make this look as clean as possible. Any car I get in here, we wanna make it look as if it came from factory, and this is gonna be the best location with the link I have. So I'm gonna put this in, and then I'm gonna get back to rewiring the rest of the radio, make it look pretty. As you can see, I got the radio in. Looks sleek as can be. Go ahead and plug this in. There you go, radio turns on. It's a slick little radio. Let me turn that down. Looks like this. It's got a little built-in DSP, car settings, the steering wheel controls, Netflix, Hulu, HBO, anything with a internet access connection. Now, what we have to do is we have to start working on the speakers. Let's go ahead and turn this off. You can tell I've already got this door off. Um, had a gentleman come in, they fixed the door handle that was on this because it was broken from the get-go and they wanted it replaced while we were here. So got some guys on it, they replaced it, fixed it, and we got to change out all the speakers. This is an eight inch speaker, a three in the door, and then we got some tweets up front. So follow me, we're gonna install that in the car and go from there. Before we hop into this time-lapse, guys, I wanna show you with Porsche, Audi, Volkswagen, BMW, most of your German cars, they're not gonna be like the American-made cars or JDM or anything like that. These are gonna be rivets holding the speaker in. This is an eight inch speaker and most of your German cars are gonna have some kind of crossover. So whenever you do this, make sure to listen. Is this full range? Is it just a sub? Is it mid range? Is it a mid range like a band pass? And in this case, it is a band pass. So they've actually got a sub underneath the seat here and some they have it in the back. But with it being a bigger size and it being a mid-range, we're gonna go ahead and put an eight inch in here instead of trying to adapt with a six and a half or six by nine or something like that. We're gonna keep the original size. That way we don't have to build adapters or brackets, anything like that. Always get the customer's opinion and get what they want from them before you do anything at all. The customer does not want to retain the factory speakers, nor does he care about the bracketry. So instead of spending 50 bucks on the bracket, we're gonna adapt the factory bracket to hold our new speaker. Some people like it, some people don't. That's why you always ask. Some people absolutely want to have the factory speaker in all its glory to put back in at another time. Other people don't care. We're going to cut the speaker out. We're going to use this adapter. That way we have the exact depth and now we have a good bracket to put our speaker on and it doesn't cost the customer any more. I'm going to start taking these rivets out and we can either A, rivet it back in or cockeye it and have our own screw set to hold this in. It's total personal preference. If you want to look aesthetically pleasing, you can do a shiny metal tapper and bit set, or you can do a factory OEM looking style and re-rivet them into the door. It depends on how much work you want to put into the car. Always make it look as clean as possible, no matter which route you choose. So let's get to it.
All right, guys, the Porsche is all finished up. It's ready for his daughter to go take it to prom. Later, they're gonna come back. We're gonna finish on the rear speakers, and we're gonna also do a keyless entry system with Drone Mobile and possibly a Turi Fast Max. If you guys would like to see that install, comment down below, let us know. That way we're not wasting our time making a video that nobody likes. We don't know unless you tell us. So until then, have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next time.